Hello there. This is a 13th century Skiosite man with another video. Now, today we're dealing with Henry III and the coronation of the boy king. So, let's get stuck in. There's a whole period of history which people don't go on about the aftermath of the King John's War. It didn't just get back to normal. People probably led to believe that upon King John's death, on his war campaign against everyone with common sense, that he chopped down dead and everyone was like, wee, wee, let's put everybody on the throne. It's all lovely and glorious. Back to normal, as is. Back to... It, it wasn't like that. It was nothing like that. England was a total state of war. The barons versus the loyalists. This was the first Barons' War. The, the politics of King John's War goes further than just the Magna Carta. We know that Magna Carta was put in place to rein in the king and give like basic human rights effectively to people. To help deal with John, we invite the Dauphin of France, Louis, over, and he takes London. He generally sort of goes around rampaging around the areas like you do in those days. Um, and he's backed up by Guala Bicheri, Cardinal Guala. And he... Man in red on a white horse was basically effectively went with the, the, the French prince to come to England to sort the problem out. Uh, again, you've got King John versus his barons. The French are now involved. The second the French land, John flees. He goes all across the country because really, he ends up back in Dorset. So regathers his armies and heads straight up north, comes to consolidate and sort of get back on track and take those areas. During his flight, he loses the crown, literally, not figuratively. So now we have no crown, nothing to crown the next king. The problem is, he catches dysentery. And a very short time later, he dies of the illness. These days, it's always the eldest child of the king or queen who becomes the monarch. Wasn't always the case. Meet Robert of Normandy. Now he is William the Conqueror's eldest son. Due to quarrels with the family, he never became king. So do take that in mind. On the death of John, we decide, the loyal barons decide, that it's his son Henry who should become the king, not this Frenchman. So we sort of side with the, side with the king. Here comes a problem. The problem is, Louis, the Dauphin of France, has captured London, and soon he'll be swathing across that area of the Hobbit. He hasn't yet taken Dover. He can't take Dover. But we can't get to Westminster Abbey. We can't crown a king in Westminster because he has London. So the only logical conclusion would be, take the young boy Henry to Gloucester, the cathedral here. And that's exactly what they did. William Marshall, the, the famous knight, has to get a retinue together and collect Henry. His mother Isabel takes them from Dorset all the way across the countryside to Gloucester, and there they meet. Now, while this is happening, do take in mind what's actually gone on. All the tension with John, that you can't trust John. You don't know what he's going to say next. He's like Joe Pesci from Goodfellas. You don't know quite what he's going to do next. And here they meet. The, 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 Isabella and Henry don't know if they're going to get killed or what's going to happen. You have the barons who want him to be king. And then tears break. It's um, the child bursts into tears. He's only nine years old. He's the future king. That breaks the ice. Then head to Gloucester Cathedral for the coronation. Imagine it, you're nine years old, your father just died, you don't know the fate of the kingdom, everything's in turmoil, and you're led up through these areas, just with a handful of people. And there, you're crowned. Now, because John had lost the crown, 
literally, not figuratively. His mother's tiara had to be used. Just think of that. A very, very small, humble boy. And then up there to become the King of England. Now, out of all of the barons, the loyal barons, do take in mind that England in the first barons' war was totally unlawless. Lawless, this was going all around the place. So there was only a select few barons who were loyal to the king. One of them should have been present at the coronation, and that was Ranulf de Blondeville. He was currently on his way to the cathedral. They were going to postpone it to get it done. He had to get it done now, so he couldn't make it. They were initially worried that he couldn't, uh, he might be uh, annoyed and not support what was going on. But luckily, when he turned up, he completely condoned everything that went on. So, turned out good. As we know that the Barons' War, yeah, due to the Barons' War, the whole of the country's in turmoil, and the handful of Barons currently here, crowning the King, along with Guarda, Bicieri, and Peter de Roche. It's uh, he, it's proud, but they can't agree with who's going to be his uh, regent, who's going to be controlling the kingdom while he grows up. This falls on the shoulders of William Marshall, and we know about William Marshall. Now, the, um, William Marshall doesn't want to do it. He's like, the boy is too poor and I am too old. He's about 70 now. But Guadalupe is like, no. If I have to, I'll carry this poor boy begging on my back around England. This sways the, um, the knight, William Marshall, to become the regent. And the rest is history.